are going to talk about minutes. And the plan is to sort of break it into two pieces. So we have limits of sequences. And then we have limits of functions. Technically, a sequence is a function because it has inputs and it has outputs. But in practice, we'll talk about sequences, and this basically has the inputs as the natural numbers. Inputs, natural numbers. And when I talk about functions, the truth is, when you're going to talk about functions, 99% of the time, the input's going to be all real numbers. So the inputs is all real numbers. So for instance, if I had a sequence over here, sort of our generic sequence might be uh, A1, A2, And maybe it's, uh, oh, I don't know, negative 1, 2, 6, uh, 5, 8. So I'm doing an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of 2. Uh, no, common difference of 3. So, so this, this is a sequence that we could ask sort of what's happening. And then we can have a function over here. But uh, how would you sort of notate this? You might say, well, f of 1 equals something, uh, f of 2 equals something, f of 3 equals something, and so on. Uh, well, what's the difference? Well, if your function here was f of x equals, say, uh, 1 over x, you could plug in 1, and you get out 1. You could plug in 2, you get out 1 half. You could plug in 3, and you get 1 third. Both of these, let's say this is an, and this function, you could ask what happens as the input gets really big. Okay? So we could essentially look at what happens over time to the outputs as the inputs get really big. You could think about those in terms of tables. I've done a horizontal table here, but you could do a vertical table. Or you could think about that in terms of a graph. This is the place you're most familiar with thinking about graphs. And the graph would look like this. We put our inputs here. So for these table values, if my input is 1, my output is 1. So input 1, output is 1. Input 2, my output will be 1 half. Input 3, my output will be a third. And then a fourth. so on, and you can sort of draw a line like that. Well, what is that red arrow saying? That red arrow is describing what about my graph? Well, this red arrow. Oh, I would call that red. But, uh, <laughs> it's saying you like your graph is yeah. continuing oh, on and on, like f of 4, f of 5, f of 6. Okay. And as that's happening, uh -huh. that output is getting smaller. Okay, good. So the output is getting smaller. How is the output represented in this picture? Y-axis? Uh-huh. The y-axis or the height. Okay. okay. Height. So when we're talking about the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x, what you should think is the height at the right end. Okay? That's what we're saying. As x goes to infinity, as the input goes farther and farther to the right, what does the output do? Graphically, that's what the height does. In 
what do these values do? Okay? That's exactly the same as over here, but the picture is just going to look a little weird. Okay? So uh, if you graphed something like this, you'd still have your inputs, which are usually the subs usually represented as subscripts here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So those would be my say n values here. And this is A of n. Let me put negative one down here. Then uh, two, four, six, eight, and so on. So my first point would be what? One negative one. One negative one. Perfect. One negative one. My second point. Two two. Two two. Then three five. Three five. Four eight. Eight. Five. Eleven. Eleven. We can sort of see that. Arithmetic would correspond to a straight line. Right. Again, as we look at the limit, the limit as n goes to infinity of a n, we are asking this same question. We're thinking height at the right end. these are different. This height gets closer and closer to zero, so we would say it converges to zero. This actually seems to get larger and larger. We would say that diverges to infinity. It goes to infinity. We're not going to use, typically we wouldn't use the word converges because it's not like it's getting closer and closer to a value. Over here, if you need to be within a tenth of an inch, well, go up far enough and you'll be that close. So as, as close as you want to be, we can get there. But here, you can't really get close to infinity. You just keep getting bigger and bigger. So those are the two pictures. Now, there is a third kind of limit that we will look at. So we'll look at three kinds of limits. Notice here, it doesn't really make any sense for my input to get close to 4 and a half. OK? How can my input get close to 4 and a half in a sequence? Well, there's a 4 and there's a 5, and that's it. But over here, I could say, well, what happens if my input gets close to 4 and a half? In this picture, you'd say, well, sure looks like your output is exactly that height, right? That's fine. There are times over here, though, that that could be tricky. Notice what happens if you continue to graph this off the left. When you get close to zero, well, it doesn't quite make sense to put in a zero. So what you want to ask is, well, what happens when I plug in things close to zero? What's going on? Okay. So we'll have three kinds of limits we consider. One is this kind. One is this kind. And that last form of limit will be something that looks like the limit as x goes to, say, 2 of f of x. This kind we'll only consider on functions on the real numbers. It doesn't have a counterpart over here because you can't get close to a fraction. So we'll work on problems from all 